to like two weeks. Well, that said, if you hit that hey guys, it's Pandas. So in the weeks after I made the Impulse Effects video, uh, I came across a couple new things about how uh, locking mechanics work in this game, and um, that's forcing me to make a correction to one of the things that I said at the end of the original video. Um, I had said that uh, because of how the locking weapons work in this game and how they target the pilot seat, um, the side and angle that you uh, use to uh, basically uh, take the hit uh, is going to affect how easy or difficult it is to compensate for the impulse effects and prevent getting flipped over. Um, and, uh, you know, part of that was true. Like, the angle definitely does matter, and uh, depending on which, you know, sides you do use, you know, like top sides, bottoms, um, you know, that's going to affect the angle. And yes, you know, it does play a role, but um, it was misleading because it made it seem like one side um, was biased over the other, depending on where the cockpit was located. Um, and uh, the, the truth of the matter is um, we did some independent testing uh, while trying to figure out why I was you're sometimes able to dodge uh, missiles without using countermeasures and turns out that uh, you know the pilot seat isn't necessarily where uh, the lock is coming from I mean yes on uh, some of the attack choppers it's pretty close to where the lock point is but if you actually go to an empty server and uh, try to lock an empty vehicle like a Stinger or Igla, you'll notice that the locking point uh, for most of the choppers is below, uh, somewhere below the rotors. Um, and that's usually where the engines are. Now, um, what's interesting is that for uh, some of the transport and I guess even uh, the scout helicopters, um, that locking point is um, located in empty space, you know, sometimes a passenger compartment. And uh, specifically here, I'm talking about the KA-60 Kasatka and the Z-11 um, scout helicopter, um, and how uh, the lock point is in, in the middle of air. It, there's no physical obstruction or hitbox for uh, missiles to hit. Um, and so uh, that means that if you have the right angles um, and position yourself correctly, those missiles can fly through through the chopper and before spinning around and orbiting, uh, kind of like how heat seekers and ECM work to BF3. Um, now, this also works to a lesser extent with the uh, the Venom and the Little Bird, but um, I would argue that it's not as useful to just due to uh, um, the trickier angles, and it's a much tougher uh, thing because if you if you mess up with the Venom, especially, um, you can actually get uh, in, inadvertently flipped from uh, the missile hitting the inside of the chopper. Um, but uh, anyways, I'm, I think I'm getting ahead of myself here. Um, you know, this is an interesting, uh, I wouldn't call it an exploit or uh, a glitch or anything like that. I mean, it, it's definitely a new tool for that toolbox of yours. And for, uh, you know, transport helicopters that don't really have, you know, many tools to play with, you know, being able to use everything at your disposal to survive is definitely a, a pretty neat thing uh, to be able to do in a battlefield game. Um, now, this trick isn't always flawless. Like in this example right here, I've been hit by one, and because I've got a mobility disabled, it hampers my ability to uh, readjust for the next uh, missiles. And so um, I actually have to use my flares to back out behind cover there. But I could see this being used to counter scout helicopter heat seeker and side seat stinger spam. Um, and it'll be interesting to see how this plays out in a competitive setting. Uh, we actually have a couple matches coming up in Synthic 16s, 24s, and 32s. So stay tuned, and I'll keep you guys posted on how it goes.